Hey, uh, in this video I'm going to show you what uh, all the variables here in the Puppet Master component are all about. First let me just uh, play the scene. I already have a Puppet character here. Now here the first thing we have is simulation and uh, simulation mode. There are three options here, active, kinematic and disabled. So uh, active mode uh, is when the Puppet Master is uh, actively trying to follow the animation and we can do stuff like that. Uh, in kinematic mode that doesn't work anymore because uh, there is no uh, joint uh, calculations going on and just uh, colliders are just uh, moved and rotated to match the animated target. And uh, let me just show you how the blending between those modes works. So we are in active mode and we have set uh, pin weight to zero which means that uh, Puppet is completely released uh, to play uh, the animation using its uh, joints. Now if we switch to kinematic then it will just uh, blend right into the target pose and then it will just uh, disable the Ragdoll from uh, updating. If we click on active again, then it will just fall down again. And the same with uh, disabled mode, it will just blend out, and uh, the difference between uh, kinematic and disabled is that in disabled mode, the entire uh, Ragdoll uh, will be deactivated. And the blend time below. Uh, Simulation mode just uh, determines uh, how much time it will take to blend from uh, one mode to another. The next thing is uh, fixed target transforms. That is useful if you don't have any animation playing on the uh, character. If you do have animation playing at all times, then you can uh, disable it and it will be a little bit faster. Uh, the next one is solver iteration count. Uh, so this is basically it will just uh, set the solver rigid body solver iteration count for all the rigid bodies that the uh, character has. Uh, visualize target pose is just uh, let me just go to active mode. Visualize target pose uh, draws this. Uh, target uh, structure here so we can just see what what kind of animation the target is uh, trying to follow next one we are we are here in the master weights so basically those weights here uh, they work for the entire puppet so the first one is mapping weight we can use it to very smoothly blend in and out of uh, the ragdoll uh, simulation just visually the ragdoll will still be here. So mapping is just uh, its means for uh, just mapping this animated target character to the ragdoll. So pin weight, you can use it to just uh, pin the character to the animation in world space. So it's, ju it's just like uh, very basic add force commands that keep the character in place. Next up we have uh, muscle weight. So if we set this to something really low, then the puppet will be really almost limp. The hands are crossing into the body because we don't have here internal collisions or nor angular limits set. So if we just enable them, then we don't have this problem anymore. Uh, next up we have joint settings. So muscle spring is basically the same as muscle weight, uh, just you can use it to make the entire puppet uh, weaker or stronger. So you can just define uh, a spring value for the puppet, just make him really strong. Uh, then you can just, this is just like a normalized uh, value that you can blend in or out. Uh, the next thing is muscle damper that can be used uh, to make the ragdoll a little bit less uh, spring-like so it will be it's, it's just a matter of taste really just to tweak this value maybe maybe if I go here so it will just uh, 
temper that animation a little bit. Pin power becomes evident if you set pin weight to something uh, in the middle. Then if you uh, adjust pin power here, you see how, how the pin weight blends out. You can basically you can adjust the curve, uh, how sharp it is. Uh, pin distance fall off makes uh, pinning uh, a little bit uh, looser when uh, the, the ractal bone is far from its target. So if I increase this, it will just uh, decrease the effect of pinning when, uh, when, for example, when the hand is too far from its target, then, then it will loosen, the pin distance fall off will loosen the pin's strength. Uh, next thing is update joint anchors. So basically we have a really uh, high definition character here that has uh, all kinds of shoulder bones and um, more spine bones than there are uh, those ractal bones with rigid bodies. So update joint uh, anchors is required because uh, all those extra bones are animated and then uh, the relative position of one joint will uh, be different from uh, the rigid body that is printed to. So, uh, if you are interested in full accuracy of the simulation, then keep it uh, enabled. Disabling it will uh, make it a little bit faster, but you you see you you will have some inaccuracies. Uh, the same thing with support translation animation. So, if you if your character has animation where the local position of the bones actually changes, then keep this enabled. Angular limits, uh, actually you don't need uh, it most of the time because uh, the joints are already actuated and uh, they are keeping the simulation visually intact, so uh, in most of the times I just uh, keep it disabled because it will um, enable for more accuracy when following the animation because sometimes just the joint limits they just get in the way and the same with internal collisions that is uh, true especially if you have some props or s stuff like that attached so if, if you have a decent muscle weight and muscle spring then chances are that you don't really need it, those two things to be enabled next thing is behaviors so behavior root is um, this game object here. There is a little comment uh, attached. All puppet behaviors should be parented to this game object. So if you are uh, having any, let's go to a scene where we actually have some behaviors. So let's go to puppet extended. Here on this character we have, uh, this is the character controller, the target, this is the behavior root, and this is the puppet master, which is the ractal. So under behaviors we have two behaviors, one is puppet, puppet behavior, I will show you real quick, it's uh, just uh, for uh, making the character react to collisions and getting up, and the fall behavior is uh, activated when the character has lost balance. So uh, all behaviors are designed so that uh, you can... They, you see they have a lot of uh, variables here, like too much to really just tweak right from the start. So, so basically the idea is that uh, they have been designed so that they don't contain any external references nor references to the character. So basically if you had another character you could just uh, go and copy those uh, behaviors and uh, just paste them to uh, another character's behavior root. Uh, so next thing is uh, walkable layers that is used uh, for uh, some behaviors, for example, behavior puppet and perhaps some others in the future. So it will just, just define the layers that the uh, character will be able to walk on, but those layers will not damage the puppet. It will not make uh, him lose balance, because otherwise 
uh, when his feet collide with the ground then he would immediately lose balance. Next thing is collision layers, which is the layers that can unbalance, uh, unpin the character and make him lose balance. Collision threshold, uh, just uh, when the collision impulse is less than the, this value, then it will not register the collision and it will not have to process it. So this is just uh, performance optimization. So if you're not worried about performance, then just leave it to zero. Target root is a uh, reference to the target character, the animated target that the Puppet Master is trying to follow. And here below we have muscles. So we have each and every muscle here, uh, starting from the pelvis. Uh, so we have a uh, reference to the joint, which is the joint of the rectal. Then we have reference to the target, which is the corresponding game object uh, in the target. And then we have props. So here uh, there is a group, which is hips. If you have a humanoid character, then those things will be, the groups will be automatically uh, assigned. They are only used uh, in behaviors, such as the puppet behavior. In here we have some uh, group overrides, so you can specify settings for each uh, group or each, each body part. Next is mapping weight, so you basically, you, this is just a multiplier of uh, this value here. So you can just uh, specify the mapping weight for each individual muscle. Uh, the same thing with pin weight, muscle weight, muscle damper, they're just multipliers of uh, those values here. And map position is true for just the uh, first uh, muscle by default, because it uh, it's a mapping option, so it will just... Uh, move the world position of uh, the target to the world position of the ragdoll. And that's basically the Puppet Master component. You see that all the variables here are tooltip, so if you are confused, then first thing to do is to read the tooltip. The next thing to do is click on this button here, help button and uh, right click on the component header and uh, here we have just the links to the user manual and the script reference uh, and some tutorial videos also we have uh, two options here to flatten muscle hierarchy or uh, go to tree muscle hierarchy so uh, once i click on flatten muscle hierarchy so all those uh, ragdoll bones will be lined up and parent it to the Puppet Master, and Puppet Master can uh, actually run like that. So it's it's good for optimization at some point. Um, if for some reason you don't like it, you can just go back to free muscle again. And that's it. Thanks.